Hello, I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. For this book talk, we'll be discussing Dragon Weather by Lawrence Watt Evans. This is a book I haven't read for almost two decades. So it was about 17, 18 years old the last time I read it. And I, I, the cover is why I bought it, because it had a big green dragon looking at a guy on top of a mountain. And the, I thought the cover was so cool. It's a dragon, of course. And then when I read the book, it would just... It, like it sucked me in I loved everything about it I liked the characters I liked the history I liked the mythology and everything just I this book was amazing I didn't find out until this time reading it though that it is part of a trilogy so I look forward to reading the other two books in the Obsidian Chronicles and let's see what can I tell you this story is about a boy named Arling Arlian who's entire village and family and everyone he knows and loves and cares about is destroyed by dragons and then he's kidnapped and put into slavery escapes and uh, basically is a story about revenge is that's what he he wants revenge on the dragons revenge on those who wronged him but it is not a dark book and there's still light happy moments in it and I, I think that's why I liked it so much it could have gone really dark but it didn't it stayed stayed good it stayed happy and light, and I, I, I prefer that when I'm reading my book. I don't like grimdark. Uh, it's not my type of story. But I think that's all I can say without spoiling the book, so I'll leave it there. From here forward, there will be spoilers. Okay, bye. Uh, he made a slave by Lord Dragon, and there was uh, Cover, Hide, Shamble, and the Dagger, the others. And... This cave, I mean, it, it sounds, I don't know, I, being stuck underground for that long, you know, it's, it's got to do stuff to you mentally. Like, he, he, you know, his eyes needed time to adjust. But I was surprised at how okay he was just being in wide open spaces like the outside after being trapped underground in those closed, confined areas for so long. And he, like, I figured he'd have agoraphobia, but he didn't. He was just able to go out. And you can also see in there where he's, his uh, dragon heart really starts. And, you know, and that was the first step. I mean, that's where everything kind of came together to allow him to be who he eventually became. It's where he's met uh, Hos Hoset, Hoset, got the amethyst that allowed him to go to the other land. It's where he became used to the dark and nothing to be afraid of. It's where he saw just how cruel and vicious people can be. So it allowed him to, even though it was horrible that he was enslaved, it, that seven years, eight years that he was in there was everything he needed. And I, you know, the Lord Enzi, it says in the books, the dragons had planned this. I wonder if they knew just, like, yeah, like they have some sort of like future vision? Are they seers? Just, uh, can they scry and see a, which path the future might take because this what happened with Lord Dragon and everything else was exactly what made Arlian become Lord Obsidian and win the day and I don't think they intended him to kill the the baby dragon <laughs> but they definitely wanted him to get rid of Lord Enziat and and break the contract so that the dragons could come back and start ruling the lands of man again and yeah this book it just the, the way that they, they gain their life, by drinking blood and dragon venom, uh, that was such an amazing thing for me to read. It was such a different concept. It wasn't some magic spell. It wasn't a transformation, uh, a cursed object or anything like that. It was a deliberate act that the dragons had to do. They know that humans are the only way that they can have, have children. And so... That's why they, part of the reason I think why they kept it around. I bet that was during the Dragon War who their elite soldiers were, were those who eventually were going to become dragons. And it's, it's yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird that the humans won, uh, but they did. And Lord Anzi was a big part of that. Guy was a jerk and a complete and utter jack wagon. Nothing about him was redeeming quality. I and mean, he, he talked about how over the last few years, his heart's gotten more dragon-like and more cold. 
But then you see, like, Lady Rhyme and Lord Wither and all of them, they talk about how he was, he's been in a, a terrible person from the beginning, it sounds like. Like, there's at no point people thought he was a good guy. And even when, when Arlian says his name in the initiation process, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we know that guy, Lord Enzi, a terrible person, mean, evil, and cruel, so we don't want to cross him. But he, he was always a bad guy. And I don't think he had any type of redeeming quality that I found while reading the book. I mean, not one. And yeah, okay, he kept Sweet alive, but only so that he could experiment and torture her. And the, yeah, the the slaves having their feet cut off, that is a concept I learned from this book, which I thought came from another book series. And I it took me until until I read it this time to figure out that's where I learned that concept. And I thought it was such a mean and cruel thing, I always wondered where that came from, and now I And this world, it sounds like it's full of really powerful beings. Because like, they talk about the dead gods, I wonder if they're actually dead, and maybe you'll say in another book. But the dragons own the lands of man because they couldn't own more. The the wizards, the the land of Erethai, the tenant <laughs> can't remember what it's called anymore and that was a sleep which allowed Arlian to sneak past and get into the land of Arathai I just an entire world of super powerful beings it sounds like it'd actually be kind of fun to explore I mean hopefully Arlian won't die and he'll have a chance to explore and see the world but uh, considering his quest is to kill all dragons I, I just don't see that happening I don't think he's gonna make it or at least he's not gonna make it as kind of the stronger uh, elite type of warrior that he currently is which he has black black to thank him for a hundred percent for that uh, and, and yeah it could be his dragon heart that helped convince black to help him out and to take his money and and teach him the ways of fighting and thinking but black does go above and beyond what a servant would do it really is a friend of his and that's something that arlian definitely needed was a friend so I'm glad Black is there. I, I hope he makes it through the series because he's, he's a good guy. I like this one is that they change color as they go. So that, yeah, the red red dragons are the babies. So then they turn gold. So they're the teenagers. Then they turn green. Eventually turn black to be the old, powerful, strong dragons. So that no matter what dragon you face, you know how strong it's going to be or how old it's going to be, how cunning it's going to be. Because you get a little bit of the idea that the dragon kept Lord Enziot's kind of personality and memory when it came forth. But it was also a lot more wild. I don't think it was... I don't think it really had those thousand years to, to, to be grow and be intelligent right when it was born. I think it was just super powerful and a little bit intelligent. Because otherwise, Arlian wouldn't have won as easily as he did. It would have been he would have lost a limb or or died there if they were able to keep those thousand years of memory as soon as they're born. And then, then the secret that Obsidian can kill at least baby dragons. I, I'm gonna guess that it can also kill the older dragons. Otherwise, uh, what's the point of it? I and mean, if you can't, if the Obsidian only works on the little ones, then how is he going to defeat the bigger one? So I'm, and it's called the Obsidian Trilogy Chronicles. So I'm hoping Obsidian has more to do with it. But uh, that's the end of it. That's all I have to say about the subject. I hope you read the book. And I when you do, I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, if not as much as I did, at least a lot. Because I thought it was an amazing book. Alright, thank you for listening. I'm Mr. Pleasant Books. See you later.